training hanging out with my friend here <laughs> hi <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like i messaged him earlier on i was like i'm drawn he's gonna come on the show let me know when he's free and he's like yeah i'm just watching he's about to start sparring now so i'm mm. glad that we got you on finally i know yeah i'm glad too i'm glad to be talking to you it's a lot of fun i know i know so how have you been how's your hands i know you broke your hands um good it's a a little crooked like um like if i bend my finger it bends under this one so it's like i'm always crossing my fingers but i didn't get surgery oh. so part of the part of the fight game i guess my body's got a lot of little little like new new um additions like new new crookedness and things and it's like i i evolved through this sport so i'm i'm a a, a new broken but evolved are you regretting not I'm, having the surgery I'm sorry. Are you regretting not having the surgery? I was for a bit. Um, you know, um the first time I went running and and like my finger was stuck under this one the whole time. It was like kind of annoying. I'm like, "Ah, man, you know, like I don't want to have this bent finger for the rest of my life, but I don't know, man. Like I said, my body's got all these like little like one shoulder's higher than the other and stuff, and I'm starting to kind of just learn that like, wow, man, you know, like I'm kind of proud of like all the breaks and things that have happened to my body in this sport, you know? Like it means I've I've put some some time and effort into it. Yeah, it's a good way. It's a good positive spin on the breaks, right? Yeah. There's been a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? I'm so happy to see that you and Reese have like met up and like you're hanging out and stuff. Mm. Man, yeah, that's been really great, like a really great addition. I would say like it's changed my whole experience at uh at TriStar and I've been here 5 years, you know, 5 years I've been kind of putting time into the space and I would say like Reese being like one of the 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 biggest kind of catalyst towards me like kind of like really being like, "Alright, man, uh let's uh let's make the best out of this experience," you know? So it's it's kind of cool. That's sick, man. That's so good. I was talking to him the other night, and I was like, "Get Jonathan to tell you about your uh, pendulum, your pendulum theory that you sent me." And he was like, "I heard it, heard it all." <laughs> so he's soaking up all your knowledge over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, and, and likewise, man. We're all, we're all sharing some things, so it's good. Yeah, it's totally good to have somebody good. here that like that that. Yeah. So I can't hear sometimes. That's okay. What were you going to say? No, I was um it's good to have that's what I say it's like really good to have another fighter here that is interested in 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 thinking kind of like a bit outside the box in terms of like how fighting is. It's hard here because a lot of people come and they're very rigid in their mindset and they 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 kind of fall into, you know, categories very easily and they don't really get to maintain their like their personal integrity right as far as like learning new things or you know you know and and Reese is really much one of those guys who's who's very like um part of the new era you know like that that is making the changes and incorporating new things and stuff like that so it's very cool you can talk about all sorts of stuff that's sick man and did you guys get to hang out when you were in Belfast for Bama 27 or no no Bama 28 28 I think. You didn't hang out at all? Mhm. Nope, didn't even but, didn't even get to know him. No way, but it's so cool that you have that experience, you know, especially with Reese being from Balmina and it was like the first Northern Irish show with Bama and stuff. That's like, you know, it was kind of monumental, you know. Mhm. Yeah. This is this a universal thing, man. It's like the the <laughs> The world is making it happen, putting things in order. So it's just like I just got to use those connections to kind of like be like, okay, you're on the right path. You know, things are kind of happening exactly how they're supposed to happen. Don't stress, you know. You know why? Yeah. Because like I want to be on a Bama show soon. They haven't contacted me again, you know, to to fight why again, and that's really Nico, bugging me out. Dude, Samuel needs to get his finger out and he needs to book you for another show soon. 
That, that's what I'm saying, man. You know, like I love Bama. I wanted to be on Bama like being outside of the UFC. There's really no organization that I want to fight for. Like that's it, man. Bama's a great organization. And I'm like, man, let me, let me like be a part of it, man. Why is he like, you know, uh, I write him. He doesn't write me back. I'm like, what's this dude's deal? To be now fair, I'm putting him I on front. <laughs> to be what's fair, that? I don't think he writes back to anyone. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, but, if, Jude, um, if he ever sees this, man. We'll start a campaign. We'll get um, uh, Jonathan for Obama. We'll get a, a, Twitter, a Twitter campaign going. That'd be nice. But, I mean, when, when you did fight in Belfast, you, I mean, you fought against Decky Jolton, you know, and his following in Belfast is huge. That's his hometown, you know. And even with that, even getting the win, you still had this huge reception where everyone wanted to dislike you because you were, like, up against the hometown hero. But you left Belfast that weekend where everyone was like, man, he's such a nice guy, you know, and it was, like, such a good fight. And, you know, so... Like, you, you won people <laughs> over that weekend, you know? Mm, nice, man. That's cool. I mean, I, I really like the, I, I like the Irish vibes, man. I, I, uh, I was because it reminds me a lot of my hometown in Portland, Oregon. The weather and things like that. So it's like, I could really, like, vibe with it. I, I mean, it just really had this nice, uh, there was a lot of green. The, the countryside was really beautiful. And so the people were really nice. Will you shut that door behind you when you go, yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah. So I really like, you know, I really, um, I really vibe well with, uh, with the Irish. So I hope to go back. Did you, get to, did you get to meet a lot of the crowd that weekend? Or was it just kind of like the fighters and like their teams and stuff? Yeah, mostly just fighters. I was kind of really in and out. Um, but everybody I met, like everywhere I went, you know, like if I was walking around and just like, just meeting random people, you know, in a restaurant or when I was getting my eye exam and we would just like talk so long and, you know, even just cab drivers and stuff. I, I just really like, I got along with everybody really well. And, and I, I, like I said, it was just a, a really unique, really beautiful place. Um, it kind of indescribable. I was a bit reluctant because, uh, you know, I, I thought like maybe the weather would be very dreary, like, like really dark and, and whatnot. But it was, it was really nice, you know, it was much nicer than I thought. Like it was beautiful. Good. Well, now we'll have to get you back to Dublin. Cause you, you, cause to Dublin? The, the Belfast show was, yeah, the Belfast show was spectacular, but the Bama Dublin shows are one of a kind. They're pretty unique. Nice. So we'll have to get you on I there. mean, if they let me on in, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Well, That'd be nice. There's a question that just came in from Ben Christopher Conway, and he said, where are you from? But it's Oregon, right? Portland, Oregon. Yeah, that's like my original. But I spent 10 years in Florida as well. And then maybe like, you know, five years or so running around the world, like just like living place to place. So now I'm kind of like on that route. Like I don't really have a home. I just kind of just drift. <laughs> that's the best. I see week. Stephen Hamill saying sh shout out. What's that? <laughs> Shout out to Reese McKee. Yo. Yeah, that's the best way to be Roman, you know? Uh, I'm sorry? So we, we, got another, we got another question from Ben Christopher Conway, and he said, how did you start off in your career with MMA? Um, that's a unique story. Um, I don't know if any of the fighters are familiar with... Uh, Charles Crazy Horse Bennett, but uh, that was actually my end to MMA. I moved to a small town in Florida where the only fighter was Charles Crazy Horse, and I, I asked everybody, um, is there any MMA? Because I had just left college wrestling. I was like 20 years old, and they said, oh yeah, there's one guy who does MMA in this town. His name's Charles Crazy Horse Bennett, and I thought Crazy Horse, I thought maybe like I was looking for an Indian man, so I was like looking for this like Indian dude named Charles Crazy Horse, and it turns out it's this real like kind of like gangster gold teeth you know like black dude and i was like wow man you know but he fought in pride he was fighting in pride at the time he had fought uriah faber and just a real like you know crazy character so i started training with him and uh we became close friends and he was still fighting in pride and then uh i started getting my first like couple fights around florida 
Um, we lived together. And then um, from there, I fought the Florida circuit, um, got picked up by Tito Ortiz like early in my career and became a part of like Team Punishment. Um, but that's when I fought Aldo. Um, and then the story just went from Aldo to a little bit of Bellator time. I fought in Bellator 1. And then um, I went on to the Ultimate Fighter. So just kind of like, um, you know, little, uh, an interesting series of events, I would say. <laughs> you've, yeah, you've had undoubtedly one of the most like colorful MMA careers of, of anyone. You know what I mean? Like you've so many, you, you almost had like a piece of every pie along the way, if that makes sense, you know? Mm. Yeah, man, I've, I've, I've like dipped into like a lot of a lot of different social circles of MMA. You know, met a lot of interesting people. Spent some time here. I got to spend some time in like Hawaii with BJ Penn, and I've experienced so many little like cool um, parts of this sport. So I do feel like really much a part of the sport. You know, it's crazy. Like a part of MMA. I, I, it's crazy. I get to. I, I do feel like a part of the sport. It's 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 incredible. Do you ever feel like that you maybe to the newer fans like that you've kind of they, they've missed out on knowing you? Do you ever feel like a little bit kind of bummed out over that? You know that you you have put in all this time into the sport and you know you've you've have all these great stories of working with all these amazing people, but the sport is so new and it, it, we get these new fans you know weekly, monthly coming on board to support but they really don't know about kind of the old school guys. So do you ever feel a little bit like, damn, I wish I'd wait until now or? No, no, I think that's why like I took off for a while. I think that's why like I took off to India and like wanted to learn yoga because I wanted to like slow the pace down. I wanted to like stretch my career out, you know? So like right now, like even today, like I feel very young, you know? Like I feel very like loose, like I'm starting like to pick up but like I got a big jump, I got like 11 years in, but now like I learned how to like take care of my body so I can kind of like keep up with these 21 year olds and learn from them and maybe like, I feel like a second wind kind of coming. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, John Bath has just asked, uh, as a former Aldo opponent, what did you think um, of the fight against Holloway this weekend? I don't know, man. That was like, oh, no, hold on. Are you, are you going to be in there a little bit later? Maybe clean me up a bit. Nice. Righteous. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, man, that was a, that was a crazy, um, a crazy fight. Um, I, uh, Reese over here bet me. He said that, that Holloway was going to win. Um, I didn't, I thought Aldo was really going to just like, pick him apart, you know, I really, I was like, I, I didn't give Holloway a chance, and ho it's crazy, like, Holloway's another one that I, like, when the first, like, UFC fighter summit I went to, I was, like, introduced to Holloway, when before, like, he even fought, like, really, and I think he only had one fight in the UFC, and I was like, man, this kid's so small, man, he's not gonna go anywhere, it's just everybody, it's just weird how the sport works, and, and wow, like, I mean, that, that was really, I would say, Man, you know, like when, when Conor McGregor beat Poirier and Aldo, that really like flipped something in my, because having fought some of these guys, you know, it's just like, it's, just, uh, it's really wild. So I think, I think the Holloway, if I could just sum it up, I would say instilled like a lot of, a, a lot of faith in me that like, wow, that, that hard work really does pay off hard work and, and, and belief in yourself. It's just, it's, it's nice seeing people um, put things together and, and what they believe in to watch it come to fruition. It's just a, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Would you do anything differently if you had a chance to start out again? No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't do anything. I had to learn this exact way, you know. Like, I wouldn't be mm -hmm. truly invested in, like, the Buddhist philosophy if I, if I, if I would have, like, believed that, like, I should have, could have done anything differently. And it had to kind of, like, play out exactly the way that it did so that I could learn exactly the way that I have so I can have the lessons today that I have. So it's just, like... And the, the best thing that I could do is put my best foot forward for tomorrow and make what I can out of it, you know? Like, there's been some disappointments, so that's for sure. I, I won't lie about that. But could I have done anything differently? I, I would have, if I would, I, I, I couldn't have, because I wouldn't have had the lesson that I had that would have made me who I am today. So it's just, that's just the way life is. Absolutely. We just got a comment there just from Ben Christopher Conway. 
he just said, that's awesome about your story, about how far you've come. And he said, which is very cool, I'm going to try and reach to where you are now. That's pretty sweet. And we lost him. <laughs> Come back, Jonathan. <laughs> we just wait for him to reconnect. I'm going to plug in my charger while we're here. Oh, he's gone. I think he got disconnected. Hang on. We're going to invite him back. We lost him. But just when we're getting to the... <laughs> Are you there? Yeah. <laughs> Just when we ben, ben, to ben the Christopher. Interview. <laughs> What's that? I said, just when we were getting to the, the pinnacle of the interview, the emotional stage, and you sign off. <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay? Ben, what? Ben, ben, Ben's calling me Gonzo. That's not nice. <laughs> yeah. He, no. <laughs> No, you're mistaking him. Terrible. He said, he, "No, you're you're not getting. You're mis you're misinterpreting what he said. He said he's going to try and reach to where you are now, and then your connection dropped off. You dropped off the screen. So he said, ha, ha he's gone.' Because I was like, he's just after leaving. No, he's calling me Gonzo, like the dude from Sesame Street, like the dude from Sesame <laughs> Street. That's a that's a total diss. All right, Ben, I see you, Ben." <laughs> <laughs> but um so like i know that you're uh you've got your your yoga class right so that's like what you're mm -hmm. you kind of you're you're alongside your training you're doing your yoga class and you're like very you know like to um you know promote yoga and the the yoga way of life and like how has that benefited yeah. you or like how important is that to you Man, I would say that's like everything, man. It's just like, like I said, there's been so many like ups and downs in this sport and like to spend my time, like you said, like, would you do anything different? Without yoga, I would, I would, I would kind of be held up by those emotions of could I have done anything differently? Should I have done anything differently? But the yoga really helps kind of like bring me to this like state of like acceptance and the state of like responsibility, you know, like, I, I, you know, of myself, you know, so like my my daily practice is like lately like i've been kind of having this term stuck in my head where somebody said like do you know what uh do you know what buddha did before he was enlightened somebody says well well he chopped wood and he carried water do you know what buddha did after he was enlightened well he chopped wood and he carried water so it's like this saying that like we all have this like kind of like personal responsibility you know for for ourselves and for our day you know and it's like the the thing that like we must kind of like remember that it's like cultivating like the best of like ourselves each day and the yoga kind of gives me that like in the small things right of chopping wood and carrying water daily to kind of like be like appreciative of that and i'm kind of like just now learning that that it's like the small victories that really matter the most and um oh this uh Cathal, she corrected me gonzo's a muppet not sesame street i remember that now kermit the frog gonzo <laughs> you know what i'm saying um so but yoga <laughs> yoga um yeah, man. So that's, that's like, it's like my daily bit of like devotion, I would say, you know, so that I don't just like lose myself in this life. Like, what is, what is this all about? Like, I'm not the greatest MMA fighter. I'm washed up or like accepting my role, man. You know, like, like I didn't choose the route of a banker or this or that. Like I'm this, like, this is what I am. And like getting other people to kind of like, cause you see so many people come into this MMA gym, man, and they're not going to make it as like a, like an MMA fighter, but you know, like in their head, they don't realize that they're made for something incredible. And MMA is like a part of that, you know? And so figuring out like what it is that mm -hmm. like makes you really special. Like we're not all going to be GSP and we're not all going to be Conor McGregor. That doesn't mean that martial arts and yoga together can't help us set a foundation to be like really, really incredible in a lot of things. So that's uh that's why like yoga means a lot to me Mo especially the buddhist philosophy I, I mean like buddha's philosophy more than anything i think helps me out and helps my yoga practice become stronger for sure man i definitely agree um, how old are you now are you 30 31 31 right so i'm 30 Ooh, i'm losing the are you still there yeah 
I, I, <laughs> I dropped my phone. But uh, yeah, so I'm 32, right? So you, you would agree that you get to like a certain point, like when you get over 30, where things start to sort of like fall into place and start to like make sense in your head and you're, and you know, things start coming full circle and you start understanding stuff a little bit better. But mm. the majority of like the viewers that we have on our show and the majority of, you know, new MMA fans are kids. They're like in their late teens, they're in their early 20s. And arguably, a lot of the kind of big names in MMA at the moment, like on the UK Irish scene, they're all in their early 20s. Is there any advice that you would give mm. to them? Um, you know, like, I don't know, you know, like, that's hard to say. Uh, I, I know that like my, my like personal core philosophy is far out, like really far out. And I think that it, it hopefully like, it'll be like, like one of those things where people be like, you know, it's hard to explain. Um, not say, oh, he was right. Oh, you know, like, like his philosophy was correct. But like I say, I think it takes a special type of, of MMA fighter, like, like more so that can, can think like Conor McGregor, right? That's like really outside the box. Like see where like movement is important, whereas other people, you know, wouldn't see something like that, you know, it's like very valuable. So we're like somebody who could connect and say something like yoga, bringing that like mindfulness into the sport, how that can pay off for your tomorrow. So like a lot of my advice, like that I could personally really give that I really believe in, such a small fraction is going to be able to like really, really key in on it. And I think that's like why the universe had like, you know, brought somebody like Reese around, you know, like because like he, he totally gets a lot of things, man. And he's a young fighter. So he like, <laughs> like getting him to know that in his head that like, man, you can do it like 100%. I mean, not only that, can, can you do it? Like you're made for it. Like getting that, like that faith in yourself that like, whoa, like, cause like now, like I can see the connections like, wow, like this is everything that I created, everything in the sport. Like I created it subconsciously, like the whole path from Charles Bennett to Tito Ortiz to, to getting on the ultimate fighter to winning. Like when those things played out, looking back and realizing like I created that, like that's, that's, that's a personal mm -hmm. experience that you can't really relay, but getting other people to kind of like, to be, really really like key in on their personal experience and key in on the little connected dots to build the faith that lets you know that like man you know like this is this is what i made for and however far i want to take it is up to me that's a hard message to get across but like somebody like reese watching i'm like this kid is going wherever he wants to go and he i think you know he knows in his heart maybe i he already starting to see it i think i meant for the ultimate fighter there's your like there's your seat I'm, i bet you you see him on the ultimate fighter within like two years you know and he'll be well off into the ufc yeah. and it's like Mark, you know, first time you hear it, I don't know, you know. There we can replay this. Maybe you've just earned me a couple of thousand grand for when the UFC want to buy this footage off me when you predicted that <laughs> Reese McKee ended up on tough, right? <laughs> and win the and win the whole thing, you know, like yeah. it's crazy. But like the faith has to be there, though. You can't just say certain things, and you have to re be able to like reconfirm your faith. That's how come some people can predict their 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 um the round they knock out and other people they just talk shit and then they get knocked out you know there's a there's a degree of like faith and responsibility have you ever thought about motivational speaking after MMA? no not like that but like i think about being a yoga teacher <laughs> 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 Post motivational speaking <laughs> after yoga class. <laughs> but what is what is the plan? That's it. For you, you That's know, the like, best obviously. I can do. Is it? What? Yeah, like like okay. after yoga class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, what Sorry. I mean is like after. Uh, <laughs> We've obviously, you know, like it's for those of us who have like followed your career from back in the day, you know, it, it was obviously really exciting to have you on Bama back in Belfast. And we were kind of like, you know, a lot of us were really excited to see what would be next for you and like, you know, where the journey would take you next. So like, what are, what are your goals for your future? You know, are, do you just live in the moment, take it, whatever happens, or have you set some new challenges for yourself? I'll tell you this, really like from my heart. 
I've wanted to fight and I, I thought I was done with fighting. I thought I retired at 30. I thought I did, right? And here's a story, a very, very personal story, only because I love the Irish fans so much. I'm going to let them in on something so personal, how I even got back into fighting. So I thought I was done fighting. I was living in Florida. I was working as like a yoga instructor and a Thai massage therapist. And I met this young girl, right? A little bit younger than me. Nah, she's like, you should start fighting again. And I'm like, I don't know, man. You know, I'm done. I've been done for, I hadn't fought in like a year. She's like, no, you should start fighting. Wherever you want to train in the United States, where would you train? I said, uh, probably Arizona, you know, because I've always wanted to go to Arizona. And my friend Bruce Leroy was out there and uh, Ben Henderson at the MMA lab. And I've always wanted to go there. So she's like, let's just pack up everything and let's, let's go to Arizona and uh, let's start your career again. I said, okay, let's do it. So I like quit my job like terribly, like, like I'm out tomorrow, guys, you know, peace, like, like totally unprofessional, like forget you guys, like, you know, like I'm out, you know, <laughs> really unprofessional. And so I definitely couldn't come back, you know, I left on like really like, like my type of terms, I just disappeared, like tomorrow <laughs> I'm out. People are like, what? Like you know, no two-week <laughs> notice or nothing? No, no, I got to do this, man. I got go to go to Arizona. So I go to Arizona, <laughs> I start trying to train, you know, like the whole way over to Arizona, I'm like eating all the hamburgers or whatever, like I think I'm stress eating or something, I don't know. I get there, because it takes like two days to drive over there. By the time I get over there, I'm like way too heavy, like way too like sluggish from city, you know, like way off to a bad start. Get a little bit crabby, whatever, whatever. The girl up and leaves me in the middle of the night. She, she drives back to Florida and leaves me in the desert <laughs> of Arizona. And... Uh, <laughs> And that was like a, just, almost, just almost like a little over a year ago. So I'm like stranded. All I have was a bicycle and I, had, I was at a friend's house, no money. She just like middle of the night packed up in like an hour. She's like, man, I'm going back, man. I miss my, my mom and everything. I'm like, what? I'm like, she's like, you can come back with me if you want. And I was like, no, I, I, I mean, I, I quit my job pretty terribly, so I can't. So, uh, you know, um, so I wanted to fight in Bama since then. Like I wrote to Jude right there. I said, man, Jude, you know, like I want to get back into fighting, man. Like, like, can you take me into Bama, whatever? I'm trying to like sum the story up. But it was almost a year ago. He didn't write me back like usual. I ended up having to fight in Pancras, Finland, Canada, all these places. And I finally got to get into Bama. So my plans, like, like you asked, to sum it up. My plans from day one getting back into fighting has been Bama. Like, so... If anybody can write to Jude and tell him that, I really think Bama is the path for me. Like, I love it. It's a great organization. So that's my plan. My, my only plan well, right now. My only organization I want to fight I, in, Bama. Okay, so if any of our viewers are watching and they want to see you back on the Bama card, then they know what to do. Get in touch with Bama. Get in touch with Jude Samuel, EFN Sports on Twitter. <laughs> Hand him. <laughs> that's it. No, man, seriously, though, it'll be so good to see you back. I know, like, there's a lot of people who would love to see it, so hopefully something happens and, and we, get you, um, we get you back. We need more stories. <laughs> man, I got plenty. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Well, listen, thank you so much for taking the time because I know that, like, you've just been training and everything. My so pleasure, I really my pleasure. appreciate thank it. You. Yo, so I got to give a shout out to, to my man, Simon, yeah, man. He's, he's commenting. I was just been to say, yeah, you man, I out? see like some friends. Yeah, my man, that's my man, Simon up, up there in Oslo, Norway. He's... Yeah, everybody, everybody, every human being in the world. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the human race. I'd like to, I'd like to thank them first and foremost. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, give, uh, before you go, leave us with a thought for the day. Good vibes only. Anywhere you go, anything you do, make sure you do it with good vibes only. 100%. We will take that on board. That's good, some good, solid advice. Yes, man. Well, listen, you look after, you look after our Reese McKee. He's very special to us, so keep, put him under your wing. Okay, okay, will do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Yes, you too. Peace. Talk to you soon. Bye. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jonathan.